I just finished my workout in preparation to get started for this week as I ramp up the launch of my business. And I'm taking you along throughout the week so that you can see the startup process of the business that I'm launching on April 6th in just a few mere weeks. As I wait for my chia seeds to thicken, I'm going to tell you that this is actually the fourth business that I've started. So we have my current business, which is part of this YouTube channel, The Wealth Vibe, that you're watching right now. And then I had two previous businesses, one a hair care line, and then I had a jewelry business with some of my friends. Because of that, I pretty much know the things that need to be done in order to launch a business but in addition to launching this business i'm going to have a few different aspects that i've never done so i'm going to actually have a podcast that's going to be involved with this business and it's going to be a website and i'm also going to be doing different services that i've never offered before i've never offered any services with any business besides like a product-based business this business won't have any products i probably will never do a product-based business that requires me to have inventory ever again in life All right, so now I'm ready to actually get to work. So although I purchased a graphic design or website design package last week, I still don't know what the name of my business is going to be. So I need to decide on what that is gonna be and see what's available in terms of website, like the do domain, and also in terms of social media handles as well. So let me grab my phone. <clears throat> So that way I can see what ideas I have. So originally my first idea was to call it Public Health Mastery because the Masters of Public Health is a degree and I wanted to put a spin on that. But my issue is that it's way too long. And so came up with some other ideas and I actually texted my sister to get her feedback. And so that's actually the only place that I have it written down, all the ideas that I have. So I gotta search for her her um conversation thread so here are my ideas public health mastery which i'm thinking is too long public health pros public health force ph mastery so the p and the h would stand for public health ph pro or force which is going to definitely be the name of the podcast and force is spelled p-h-o-r-c-e and then I think, yeah, I sent her another one, leadpublichealth.com. So I know that publichealthpro.com is not available. And I'm kind of leaning towards that, like a public health pro or the PH pro. Not really sure yet, but I need to do some background research. Okay, so I'm still not quite sure on what I want the website to be called, but I just remember that I bought this course from Pat Flynn um smartpassiveincome.com he had a course on how to create your brand and how to develop your website i forget what it's called but i'm about to go log into my teachable and see if i can find his suggestion because i think that in his course he talked about ways to come up with your brand name this is the course that i was talking about build your own brand it's a free course and i've gone through it like twice now but let me see Picking your brand name. What did I tell y'all? I know Pat Flynn always has all the resources, y'all. And a lot of them are for free and they're very valuable. And if you have not listened to his podcast before, make sure you should check it out. So what's your brand name going to be? For many, this is a very simple answer. For others, it's an anxiety-filled nightmare of a decision. But the truth is, if you don't pick a brand name, there will be no brand for people to follow. You need to make a decision, and I'm gonna help you make that decision in this video. Okay, so I just finished that video, and one of the things that he talked about in there is if you wanna have a personal brand or not, and one of the things that I've been going back and forth about is whether I wanna have a personal brand. 
And I think I do to some extent. I want to be the face of it, but I do want something that is not like Dr. Shana Green or Shana Green or something like that. Um, because I want to, if the option ever comes available, to be able to sell the website at some point. And so having a generic kind of name will help. My boyfriend came in and we discussed the options. We narrowed it down to public health mastery or master.com or public health force. And we eliminated the pro, although I really, really liked it and he liked it too. But since the dot com is not available and I was considering the dot co or adding an S or, you know, doing some other variation, we figured that it probably wasn't a good idea because if someone Googles public health pro.com, thinking that I left off the M or, you know, thinking that it's supposed to be something else that it's not, they're going to come across the publichealthpro.com, which is currently like a part domain and they're going to, I'm going to lose them. And when I did some research on Twitter and Instagram and, you know, other social media accounts to see like if it was taken, Public Health Pro on Twitter was already taken. It was not taken on Instagram. But that just was another reason to just go ahead and eliminate that. So then we were debating between public health mastery and master.com. And then finally, we were like, public health force seems good, especially since I want to call the podcast The Force, spelling it P H O R C E. And the reason why I'm not going with force spelled like that as the website name is because people probably won't be able to find it initially until I build up some type of brand recognition but podcasts I think it's safe for podcasts and the good thing about this I checked hashtags too public health force hashtag public health force is actually a hashtag <laughs> that people use um on twitter and on instagram but it's not taken as a handle so that's really good so I could potentially capitalize on the hashtag so i'm going to go ahead and lock everything down and that is my brand name y'all oh my gosh i'm so excited that i finally got that figured out another key component to quality videos is your lighting so i did invest in lighting early on into my youtube videos i got a ring light which a lot of youtubers get but since then i have upgraded to led lights with a soft box on it so you'll see this light here and it gives me this really nice soft light. <laughs> if you watched last week's vlog, you know that I took my computer into Apple to have them fix the screen. So I'm without a computer. And so while I was waiting for my boyfriend's computer, since we're sharing in the meantime, I decided to film a YouTube video. But he's still not done on his computer. So I have still not been able to secure the domain and the social media accounts and things like that. So I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because I am getting sleepy and I'm ready to take this makeup off because I think I'm looking a little greasy too. So catch you in the morning. Good morning. So my boyfriend decided to stay home today. And since we are sharing computers, since mine is getting repaired, I spend the morning in the gym and also getting prepared for my interview which i have in a little less than 30 minutes it's a telephone interview for a job that i'm interested in so he's about to wrap up what he's doing on the computer because i need the computer to do the interview that i'm having shortly because i might need to do some like technical coding or something like that on the computer so after I get off the phone, I'm going to get to work on my business and other things I need to do. Hey, what are you working on? Uh, for the course. Oh, for the course that launched today? <laughs> you kind of a little late, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, you know, somebody had my computer all day yesterday. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm about to do the interview in, I guess, a few minutes, so... So the interview starts in three minutes, y'all. Good morning, this is Shana speaking. Hi, Shana. Hi. 
So homegirl said she was gonna move me on to the next step, which means I'm going in person to an interview. I'm not gonna tell you where yet. So my boyfriend already came and confiscated his computer again. So I'm about to, I think, make a smoothie. But you might be wondering like, why is she starting up a business, but also looking for jobs? And the main reason for this is because I need capital. <laughs> To get this business to the level that I want it to be, it's going to require some moolah. Like I've already spent between the Facebook ads course and the website, several thousand dollars. So, and if you watched my um, net worth video, you knew that I had a couple thousand dollars saved up. But by the time I actually launched this business, the way that I want to launch it this time. I'm not going to run through all of it, but I will have used, you know, probably more than half. So if I don't have income coming in, I can't float the business and grow it and scale it to the level that I want to scale it. And the great thing about this job, which I told her, is that it's very related to helping people develop in their career. And so with this position to be able to be in a position that will complement the the business that I'm developing will also help. My boyfriend just left to go deal with his real estate property. So I thought I was gonna be able to start working, although it's now like half the day has gone. But then he calls me and says that he needs me to meet him at Home Depot because we need to make a final decision on flooring so that the contractor can move forward with the flip. I put this on backwards. A lot of times women start their own businesses while they already have a full-time job. And so tempering or sort of striking the balance between your job and, 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 and then throwing in maybe raising a family and you know doing your side hustle, which you, you know, want to grow into a big business, the side hustle often suffers. This clip that I just watched was really eye-opening. And it's a thing that me and my wife talk about a lot about whether I should get a job or not so that I can focus on my business and growing that to the next level. But I just feel that right now I do need capital to get it going even further. And I also think I would be in a better position if I was able to pay off my student loans to take the risks that are needed. However, my boyfriend has been super supportive that he's always like, I will pay for whatever you need to get your business going. Um, I support her a thousand percent. He doesn't feel threatened. But more so, it's like a... They preaching the word over here. Now it is time for me to get all of those things done, like securing the email address, the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all of that. However, I did realize that I probably can't secure the domain yet because the web de designer, he told me that he had, uh, I don't know if he said 30% or if he just said a discount on like domains and hosting through GoDaddy. So I'm going to wait, but don't worry. By the time this video goes up, the domain will be secured. Okay, down three. So everything is set up, and I'm really excited. That's just the beginning <laughs> of uh, claiming my stake with my brand. Good morning, I just came from the gym and I have a slight headache. I don't know how to describe it. It's not like a full blown headache, but something feels a little off, like lightheaded, but not lightheaded. I don't know. Been feeling like that since I woke up really. 
but um, I'm about to run to the grocery store before I get the day started because I noticed that we're missing a few things before I get started with my work for today because thank God Mike is not here today. <laughs> as much as I love spending time with him, we cannot be at home together for two reasons. One, we like to just be like laid up under each other. And then two, especially during this time where I don't have a laptop of my own, he is using his laptop so I don't have a laptop to use when I do need to use it. I got a cashew from this 100 calorie pack stuck in here. How am I supposed to drive without my seatbelt on? If I got a cashew stuck in the seatbelt. So today my work is going to surround on defining my customer avatar or my uh, persona for my business. Okay, so I'm starting with the Facebook ads course in order to help me define my target market or my segmented art market. It has you download this um, workbook. It's called The Simple Guide to Understanding Your Customer and Target Market. I guess there are four parts to it. Understanding your target market, what problem are you solving, making assumptions, and narrowing down your customer. Now it's 7 p.m. and I'm jumping on this other live group call for the Facebook ads course that I'm in. So here I am, I'm in the room, in the bed, on the computer to do this because my boyfriend is out there listening to Undisputed as he does every day after he comes home for work. Good morning, I just got in from the gym and I checked my FedEx tracking and it says that my computer is on the way so you know how these delivery people can be sometimes where they don't knock on the door so I'm leaving a note for them to tell them knock on the daggone door Okay, so I put on a little makeup because I have a strategy call with Aaron from Aaron On Demand, and we're gonna be talking about my new business and come up with some strategies. Last night, where I left you guys at was me. Actually, I was on that Facebook ads um, conference call, but during the day, I was figuring out my um, my persona for my business, and I think I did a great job, and I have that. So I did it in three different ways. I did it based off of the Facebook ads course, um, Amy Porterfield's course, Digital, Digital Course Academy, and also um, this resource that Aaron had in the eBrand Club, which is really for non nonprofits, but it's, it's all the same idea. So my ideal customer is a woman, 24 years old, single. She has her master's of public health. She's a fellow at the CDC. And so she works nine to five-ish at the CDC. Um, she has a dog that after she leaves work, she walks. She might go to happy hour, hang out with her friends. Maybe has a part-time job at Starbucks on the weekend, but definitely goes to brunch on the weekend-ish for sure. She reads books like Becoming. She hangs out on Instagram and Facebook. She's a part of the Black Ladies in Public Health Facebook group. And she follows people like Angela Rye and Lovey and Myleek and other people. I didn't really know so many other people, but <laughs> that's what I wrote down. Um, 
she inspires to be like um some people in public health or in medicine and she feels like she's getting overlooked by employers like she may never get a job or that she might have a gap on her employment history and income and she's not getting callbacks and she wants to have a career in public health and be a leader in the industry. Dana, <laughs> that is so good. That is the kind of detail you have to have because now you can really like speak to that person. Um, I love that. That is really okay. good. And in that, I was like picturing a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. And like certain people who I know who are in public health or in that field, mm -hmm. like came to my mind. I finished my call with Erin about an hour and a half ago at this point, but it was really good. She provided a lot of direction in terms of um, the membership club stuff because she does have a membership club and she has a lot of insight on that. And she provided some good, you know, feedback on some approaches that I was thinking about taking for getting people to join the membership club. So I'm really excited that I did that. And we also, you know, had a little conversation after where we're both Howard alums and we were talking a little bit after. So it was really good to connect with her. So within that hour and a half that I got off the phone with Erin, I actually had a phone call with my boyfriend's sister about her student loans and she was trying to figure out what to do and everything. So right after that, <laughs> or in the midst of that, my laptop came. And then after that happened, my boyfriend called and was like, do you want to go out for a little date night? Because tonight is actually, or today is actually Black Love Day. It's the day before Valentine's Day. I just found out about it this year, but it's a legit holiday. And he is anti-Valentine's Day. But he was like, I'm down for celebrating Black Love Day. Low key, this look like a brand new laptop, but it came up with my stuff on here, so I guess it's mine. Um, but it looked brand new. Interessante. But I'm so glad that I was able to get this repaired for free. Because I was like, I am not paying $99 when I pay for Apple Care Plus. And I feel like it was not my fault why the screen cracked. Look at what they got me. These are my favorite flowers. Orchids and lilies. I like tulips too. I don't have a vase here, so this will be their temporary home until we get one. Good morning! So, since I got my laptop back, I can get to a lot of the work that I couldn't do because I had, you know, a few files still on my computer. But, first thing I gotta do for the morning is call the IRS because I need to get my EIN number. If you are calling because you already have an EIN, but you can't remember it, need a confirmation letter or other assistance concerning that EIN, press or say three. If you are calling, your call may be monitored or recorded for quality purposes. Please hold while your call is transferred. We're sorry, but due to extremely high call volume in the topic you requested, we are unable to handle your call at this time. Please try again later or on our next business day. What you mean? You can also visit us on the web at www.irs.gov. Thank you. No, they did just hang up on me. Are you serious? They say if you have lost or misplaced your EIN, that you are to call this number and they gonna tell me they too busy and hang up on me. <laughs> okay. Okay. My EIN number, I believe, is on an external hard drive in Atlanta in my storage unit. So that's why I cannot find it.
but this is unacceptable. You can't hang up on me. At least put me on hold and say that wait is two hours or whatever. Shoot. This is ridiculous. <sighs> okay, what's next on the list of things to do today? I'm going to go ahead and buy my domain today. I purchased my domain and my hosting. I also gave the graphic designer or the web designer um, all the specs for what I want for my website. And so he's going to start working on that. And we have a meeting scheduled for next week to talk through the design and whatnot. But I need a logo. So I'm on Fiverr. And I just requested the guy who created the logo for my boyfriend's real estate business and real estate course. He did a really good job with that. So I'm going to use him again to um, create my logo. So he just sent me over a custom offer over on um, Fiverr. And so I'm about to pay for it now. So he's charging $100. And I think it comes out $105 with um, fees. He has service fee. But this is the color scheme that I chose. I started off with this um, salmon pink color because this is the color that you wear in graduation for schools of public health or a public health degree. Um, it will be on your tassel, it'll be on your gown or whatever else is related to your graduation nailia, paraphernalia. And so what I did with this website is I just chose complementary colors um, and they'll generate complementary colors for you, but I obviously needed to have something in green because green to me speaks to health. I'm going to have to send over the designer, my color palette so that he can create the logo based off of the color palette. And obviously he's not going to use all of the colors in the logo. Please hold while your call is transferred to our call back service. Please wait. Okay, so I just called back the IRS and this time they allowed me to do a um, call back. They said that the wait was going to be 30 minutes to an hour. My mom just texted me and told me that I should watch this TV show on ABC called For Life. So I just found it and I'm about to watch it. Apparently it's by 50 Cent. So this is the pilot. I'm about to edit a YouTube video while I watch this show. Hello? Hello? Hello, yes, I'm here. Hello? 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 Oh, I'm still having trouble. Um... Hold on just one second. Please do not hang up. <laughs> I don't know why it's going in and out. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I hear you right now. Hear me? Yes. Okay. And this is this for a sole proprietorship, a corporation? A sole proprietorship. And you would be the sole proprietor? Yes, that's correct. Let me just place you on a refold while I do some research and then I will check back in with you no later than five to seven minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have no idea why my phone wants to start acting crazy. I know I have, um, you know, service issues, but this entire time I've been on the phone all day and haven't had no issues. But as soon as the IRS picks up the phone after an hour of waiting, mind you, they never call me back like they were supposed to. So I decided to call them and stay on hold for an hour. Then my phone want to act up. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. I don't even know if they call you back. So I'm back on hold with them and I'm looking at my phone and I realized that for the past maybe two weeks or so, 
I've been having really good service on my phone. It's actually been on all bars. Like, you'll see here, like, I have all bars. So it's like, I don't understand. Like, was she talking to me on her cell phone in a drop? Like, what in the world? Oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. I gotta sit on the phone with them or sit on here and wait for them to answer the phone for a whole nother hour. A whole nother hour. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I finally got my EIN number after waiting hours for the IRS to answer my phone calls. So now I can move on with my life. But first, I am hungry. So I'm about to prepare a salad with the um, fish that I had for dinner yesterday from the restaurant. And I'm also going to add some um, extra shrimp with it. Look who's here. Yeah. He went and got his own food and get me none. You look bald face like. So I had to go make my own food. I made that. <laughs> Just now. You are something else. We're about to enjoy our separate dinners and watch the show together on Valentine's Day. Yep, sure are. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, you, want oh, you don't want to give me a kiss? I tried to get one earlier. Off camera, but now we on camera. That's what you want. Oh, come on, wow. come on. So I'm about to lay up with Bay on the couch while he watches reruns of Undisputed from four years ago. But while I watch this, make sure that you check out this video right here, the vlog from last week, so you can learn how everything started. Thanks for watching.